many, many reasons why I don't like Emma Nelson, like a plethora. For example, she's rude. Why are you on my computer? Next time, can we try asking before trespassing? Well, that's great, wasn't it? The Canadian Shield, Let great. Let shut up for once. Have you ever heard of knocking? Have you ever heard of manners? Gotta go sip a frap with Paige. Have fun in your hot tub. I need ideas, Emma, please help me. I'm sure you'll think of something. She incites chaos. Go home, Lakers! Go home, Lakers! Lakers! Go home, Lakers! You're actually buying this toxic junk? Give me back my lunch. Against violence, show the school where you stand. She's allergic to minding her own damn business. What if she doesn't tell him? Do not even think of interfering. Mom is pregnant and she's thinking of having an abortion. <laughs> but this morning, he had his arm around Liberty and I saw him pass her note outside. It really looked like he was coming on to her. You know Liberty, a kid in seventh grade? Trigger fingers turn to Twitter fingers. She ignores her very obvious privilege when championing for causes, especially ones that don't affect her. Free computer's a free computer, man. What idiot wrote this? I wrote that. Students shouldn't be force-fed advertising when we were at school. Sean here is falling behind in school because we can't afford a computer. Why are you on my computer? He can do his homework here. What, yeah, on the free computers, huh? Care about food you eat, don't eat at the cafeteria. But if it means kids can afford lunch, yeah, and cancer 20 years from now, if I was starving to death in the third world, I'd rather die of cancer in the future than not have a future at all. It's against violence. Show the school where you stand. Real nice, Alex. Maybe if you cared about the cause. What do you know about it? You ever ice your mom's lip? Bandage her up? Lay awake at night listening to her cry? Didn't think so. Gotcha, bitch! But her most egregious offense, in my opinion, is the treatment of her best friend, Manny Santos. Throughout the duration of DTNG, we see Emma employ numerous ways to shame, belittle, and humble the girl who had consistently been there for Emma through thick and thin. Every time I rewatch this show, I get more and more annoyed with their friendship, especially since a lot of people seem to think that they have the best bond. At every turn, I just wonder why Manny didn't drop Emma altogether. Granted, I know they were friends since childhood and those bonds are really hard to break, but Manny just takes everything Emma throws at her and loves on her harder. Maybe it's because of her own messed up family dynamic, but I really think that Manny deserved better. When the show first started, it was clear that Emma was the main character in this friendship. Emma got all of the storylines and Manny was there for emotional support. But whenever Manny made attempts to be her own person and develop a life outside of her bestie, Emma was quick to humble her. She did this when Manny wanted to become a cheerleader. How can we advance as women if some of us insist on wearing short skirts and dancing like bimbos? That's harsh. Manny, you were asking about this. It's coming out at noon. Nice, Emma. So I'm a bimbo too. And when Manny changed her look. You're getting this huge ego. I am not. Just because I'm dressing like- You're dressing like an idiot. You look great. You know, I wouldn't say it if it wasn't true. We also saw Emma do this when post-family breakup, Manny began talking to her awful parents again, readying herself to move back in with them after being unceremoniously kicked out. Don't be mad, Em, but I think it's time for me to go home. And I can't believe you're turning your back on your friends. Emma said it was because of JT's untimely passing, but the animosity she displayed toward Manny could easily be viewed as projection. Manny moving out could have represented Emma's fear of having to actually deal with herself because if she's not clinging to Manny, she's clinging to a boyfriend. Although most of their fights could be attributed to typical high school passive aggressivity, Emma does the unthinkable when she pursues and later dates this thing 
who exploited her best friend. Don't even get me started on the racial implications of Peter targeting a POC woman, but seriously dating her blonde white bestie. During a Canadian summer, Emma starts having a crush on Miss Hatsalakis' demon spawn, but she realizes that the skinny sociopath at the pool is actually into her friend and not her. So Emma's jealousy kicks in, hard. First, she doesn't invite her to a party that he threw, seeming surprised that Manny even showed up. What are you doing here? So, how'd you know about this party? Hey, Manny, glad you can make it. Hey, Manny, glad you can make it. No! Uh, God, yes, he invited no. you. Then she ignores Manny the whole night, hanging out with the girl she was just talking shit about at the pool. He's talking to that turquoise tankini tramp. I hate her. And leaving without Manny, although she knew something was off with her. When Manny finally comes home, obviously drunk, Emma can only ask about whether or not she was with the little demon. You need to tell me why Jen saw Peter and Stinky Drunk You upstairs alone at 2 a.m. Look, I know they're teenagers, but for someone who claimed to be a feminist, Emma had major pick-me vibes here. Manny could have seriously been drugged or even assaulted in her vulnerable state, and all Emma cares about is some blonde skeleton who isn't even interested in her. The results of the skeletal sociopath and Manny's flirtation go viral. Emma immediately shuns Manny and drops her as a friend, only taking her back once Manny begins groveling. And Emma completely dismisses her bestie's insecurities that led up to the event. It'd be easier if I was you, Em. Skinny, blonde. Manny, that is a bunch of crap and you know it. That is not what this is about. And because Emma loves Manny's leftovers, She continues to flirt with Skeleton Boy, but vows to get revenge on him after he calls Emma a tease. Not because he distributed CP featuring her best friend and made her life a daily living hell. Emma attempts to give Satan's son a taste of his own medicine for her own selfish reasons, but she stops because his room is cluttered. Wow, you have no private space. Okay, and? Apparently, Emma thinks Peter, who blackmailed and extorted her best friend, is sympathetic because his parents are divorcing and they use his room as storage. Manny's parents essentially disowned her, yet somehow a rich white boy's first world problems are worse. To top it all off, just to keep Manny from warning Spike about Emma's eating disorder, she blurts out that, I'm dating Peter! And even after this, Manny is still willing to help Emma, warning her predator that Emma is sick. During Emma's panic attack following the intervention, she directs all of her rage at Manny and barely even acknowledges her when she's by her side at the hospital. Emma is still dating this boy after all of this and we even catch a glimpse of the three of them hanging out together. Can you imagine how the conversation must have gone when Emma got out of the hospital but decided to still keep dating Peter? Em, <laughs> so you're still seeing Peter? Yeah. But but why? <laughs> you're not, you know, you're not in a anorexia-induced state of mind anymore. Why do you still want to see him? Because, Manny, I hate you. You wanna hang out with us? Long friendships can be amazing when both friends are committed to respecting each other's boundaries, being supportive, and putting in the work needed to keep the friendship alive. Manny and Emma's friendship, however, displays none of this, at least not on Emma's end. I also have to note, Emma was not supportive of Manny during her baby deletion crisis. Please, you have to understand. My mom will be down in a minute. Slut shamed her whenever it was convenient. Because I'm dressing like- You're dressing like an idiot. I don't want to be friends with the school slut. You take advantage of drunk girls. You are the drunk girl. We're not having real sex. It's pretty close. But I'm not getting pregnant. And treated Manny like a frenemy on multiple occasions. Gotta go sip a frap with Paige. Have fun in your hot tub. Good luck tomorrow, Manny. Thanks, Mr. Ass. It's all about Panther Prime. Which is so much more important than academics or 
Even actual sports, yeah, if the school printed money, your face would be on it. Yeah, call the media. Manny Sanchez has healed the entire school. I want to also stress that just because you've been friends with someone for a long time does not mean you have to stay in the friendship forever. People change and sometimes you just can't take everyone with you. You may have realized you're pouring into the friendship more than the other person, or that you outgrew them, or that they had a role in the shooting that left you paralyzed. But just like romantic relationships, they still have to be healthy. If you ever find yourself with a friend like Emma Nelson, run. You'll probably be her only friend anyway, and who wants that? Now I know why Manny was your only friend. She's a saint to put up with your crap.